Chris, Matt, so great to meet you both. How are you? Hi. We're good. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Um, um, yes. Um, congratulations on the show. I'm on episode six, I think. I am re really enjoying it so far. I'm loving it. Um, what I love about the MonsterVerse, in a way, uh, is that there is a sense of timelessness uh, with Godzilla, especially since it was created in the in the 50s, 54, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. um, you know, the politics and nuclear weapons and countries at war against each other. Uh, when you take on a project like this, how do you find a way to adapt it to a 2023 audience, paying tribute uh, to the original material, and yet still manage to keep in mind that the, the fact that very little has changed in terms of what Godzilla actually represents, what does it mean in terms of storytelling for you? Well, I think we had, I mean, those, uh, the, the, the monsters speak to a, a sort of an existential anxiety or angst for every year. It's like you said, it comes out of, you know, post-World War II Japan, and then you get into the 50s and the Cold War, and then you get in the 60s and 70s, and there were all kinds of environmental and ecological threats. And now we were working on this show in the modern era, and you have issues of global climate change, and we were producing the show in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and those, I think those issues keep these characters relevant and keep those issues relevant through all the generations. It's why it's been so enduring. But the story we wanted to tell, which we feel makes it contemporary, is it was a story about this family. I mean, if we could keep the focus of the show on the Randa family, on a character journey about a brother and a sister um, who discovered this terrible secret and betrayal by their father, and then they go on a quest to discover why their father did the things he did, and that leads them down this rabbit hole into the world of Monarch and into the world of monsters. It felt like that was a, a way into a contemporary television show. Yeah, you know, to, to, to us, the, the, the monster, the, the, the monster that caused Kate's trauma isn't Godzilla, it's her father. You know, yeah. and 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 you know, our our, our monsters are, are all kinds of scale in this movie, but in the show. But like the movies, it's an allegorical frame or mirror or lens that lets us look at whatever our anxieties are, existential or otherwise. And there's no more existential kind of threat than like, what if my family isn't isn't, isn't what I think it is? You know, what, what, what if, if I'm not? What if I'm not who I think I am? Right? right. It's it's a. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, usually we get movies about Godzilla, for example, and the MonsterVerse, but this series is like a total of 10 hours long, I think, and there's always a cliffhanger. You have to keep watching. So it very much feels like a very long movie. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like for you to take something we usually watch in a theater on the big screen, make it into something people will binge at home? How did you know uh, what to add, what to put in this series that will keep people hooked until the very last sentence of the very last episode? Well, you had to build it from the ground up as a television show. I mean, I think that was one thing that I think Legendary was really smart about when they started developing the show was they realized early on that, that what they couldn't do was just shrink one of their movies down to a TV screen. What you had yeah. to do was say, okay, what is a story that's going to sustain over 10 hours? And if you look at the best episodes of television, now television shows that you love and you're drawn back to week after week after week, it has to be, you have to be pulled forward by those characters and, and their conflicts and their problems and their issues. And, mm -hmm. you know, if I, you know, not only would we not have had the resources to make every hour of TV a big monster epic, but people would get bored with that. If every episode of the show was Godzilla kicking buildings over, it's like, yeah. are, are you going to keep coming back to that show? Yeah. So yeah. the challenge for us was, you know, how, how do we create a TV show to sort of put, in a sense, sort of set the movies aside and go, okay, how do we build a television show that exists within the same universe that the movies do? And, you know, m movies have beginnings, middles, and ends, you know, and, and I think part of the craft of telling serial fiction is that what's the hook? You know, how do you get someone to, at the end of an episode, go, ah! Because they have to wait for the next one, and we would start to build that as we were building the show. It's like, what's a great... And Matt's experience coming out of comics, you know, I mean, he's written far more sustaining episodes, issues every month, an issue of a new comic mm -hmm. coming yeah. out, where that story needs... You have a... He's written way more <laughs> monthly issues of a comic than I've written hours of television. 
So, I mean, that skill set of keeping a story going and knowing what the cliffhanger, how, how you get the people back into the comic book store to buy the next issue, yeah. you know, yeah. is yeah. something that he knows how to do. Yeah. Uh, they're giving me the wrap. Thank you so much. Oh, for that was so me. fast. Thank you. <laughs> that was that was so fast. I know yeah. they're giving me the wrap. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I have a thousand questions for you because I really, really enjoyed the show. I think it's, I, I'm telling everybody I know to watch it. Oh, oh thank you. But yeah, no, it's, it's really good. And I kind of grew up watching Godzilla as well. So, you know, Great. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Congratulations. And I hope to see you soon again. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.